Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hi, folks. Dr. Dan from Doc Talk here. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about synchronizing and AI in cows and heifers with Dr. Bob Larson from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're glad you joined us. It's a great time of year. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, and I hope that you enjoy this show. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Larson. Welcome to the show. Good to be here, Dan. Dr. Larson is a professor of clinical sciences here at Kansas State University, where he serves as the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine and he teaches numerous classes here. And, and um, you've got an extension role, you've got a research role, you've got a teaching role. Uh, you spend a lot of time with our producers, but this is one of those topics you've spent a lot of time on. Yes, I, I think that, uh, that the technology of, of AI has been around for a long time, um, but how to utilize it in, in ranching situations is, is still somewhat of a challenge, but a, a great opportunity. Absolutely. And folks, Dr. Larson is one of those people that, that not only uh, can get down to the nitty gritty on the scientific level, but he's been in private practice and understands uh, what goes on in a, in a cow herd, and, and so let's just get rolling into this, the synchronization and AI. You know, why, why not just kick the bulls out in the pasture? You know, there's, there's a lot of times where kicking the bulls out is by far the easiest. Uh, bulls are not inexpensive, so even that process of selecting and using those bulls well takes some good management to, to really optimize that. But the great thing about AI is the ability to use bulls that have many, many offspring. And, and when you have a bull that's had so many offspring, you really know how he's going to perform. We call that a proven bull. So it's a bull that we know what we're going to get. Um, and by purchasing semen, you can, you can get the, the traits that you're really looking for for your herd. You know, if you need more growth, more carcass traits, more of the reproduction traits, you can really find those bulls that you, you're really confident that because he's had so many offspring already, that that's what you're going to get when you breed to those cows. So one of the big advantages to using AI sires is that, that knowledge of that uh, superior genetics that you're going to get. Yeah, and, and when you're just starting out or, you know, even if, from, the, from the beginner herd to the, to the advanced herd, you know, there, there yeah. are different advantages. To A, exactly. You know, I, I've helped, uh, you know, some, some herds that are basically, you know, 4-H FFA type projects, so really small groups up to, you know, herds of, of several hundred to a thousand cows and trying to figure out how to make AI work in those different situations. So, and, and it really is a way to, to change your genetics quickly. It, it really is because, uh, you know, usually when we're, when we're buying natural service bulls, we're buying what they potentially could do. And, you know, we use EPDs to make sure that we're buying the bulls that, that, that really fit our needs, but you don't really know how they're gonna perform exactly. until you've got calves on the ground. And so you, you get to take a shortcut with AI. Okay. so other reasons on why to do it? You know, um, when we work with herds that, that synchronize, um, especially if the herd is, is, you know, fertile and they had a lot of cows calve early in the calving season, uh, when you add a synchronization protocol, you can actually move the average calving date up a few days. Now, I don't, I don't want to oversell that. You, right. you, you can't change, you don't, you can't shove mother nature. All you can do is nudge her a little bit. <laughs> um, and so we're talking about moving the average calving date up a few days, but 
these calves are going to be gaining a, more than a couple of pounds a day. And at the prices we're seeing right now, if you move uh, the herd up even five days, that, that starts to be five days times two pounds a day times, uh, you know, 200 or 250 a uh, pound. You're talking about some, some dollars that are worth, bucks. you know, that, that are kind of invisible money just by having those calves a little bit earlier. So you get the advantage of the increased genetics as well as, you know, some the opportunity at least to, to really kind of move that calving season earlier. Perfect. Folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Bob Larson on AI and synchronization of your cow herd. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Todd Windsor, a student in the College of Veterinary Medicine at Washington State University, was recently awarded an Amstutz scholarship. Todd is from North Central Washington, and he and his wife have one child. With a background in beef cattle, his goal after graduation is to work primarily with cow-calf producers anywhere his career takes him. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Larson, who is the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And Bob, uh, you're a regular on the show. A lot of people are starting to familiarize you with the show. It's great. It's great for K-State. It's great for the beef industry. We really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show and sharing it with, with our viewers uh, oh, around the world. Um, but, you know, as we were talking during the break, we're going to jump into one of the things. We, we talked about the why, and, mm -hmm. and that's the genetics and, and the shortening the, or moving up the, the calving date. But but let's talk about who our candidates are and, and why 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 we're picking those animals. Right. You know, in, in most situations that I've dealt with, most herds, the heifers are probably the easiest group to start with with a synchronization and AI program. And a couple of reasons that are real obvious is um, those heifers don't have a suckling calf on them. And when you start talking about a synchronization program where you have to run cattle through a, a squeeze chute and sort them off, when I'm dealing with my, my adult cows, uh, you know, I'm having to sort off the calves and, and work with them in that way. So a lot of times, if, if you've never done this before, the easiest group to start with is the heifers. Um, and, and they're really a, a, a good group to do that with because um, a lot of times we, we manage them separately. Uh, they may be in a dry lot or a grass trap where it's a little bit easier to handle them. They're nearer our facilities many times. And, and the other thing is, I recommend that we kind of breed those heifers a little bit earlier than the rest of the cows. And again, just from, especially for spring calving herds, that just the way the calendar works, we can get those heifers bred really before grass turnout time. Whereas again, with my cows, it's a, you know, a little bit later and, and we've right. got a few other problems. So oftentimes, if, if someone's never 
uh, utilize synchronization and AI, I think those those heifers are a, a great place to start. Well, and we're, we're also, when you're talking about moving that calving date up a little bit, when we're, we're trying to focus on helping those heifers have their first calf on the other end of it, and, yes. and some of the, you know, the, maybe the claustrum isn't as, as potent as, right. as the cow's claustrum, and, and so there are some other advantages of pushing those heifers up a little bit sooner. You bet. We, we really like it when the calves born out of heifers are born very early in the calving season. They get, they get uh, a chance to get started real well um, b before the rest of the calves come along, and that way they, they tend to stay healthier and, and we have less problems with them. Yeah, cleaner environment, um, yeah. you're not contaminated by the other calves and, and things of that nature. So, so a lot of advantages uh, to those. So if we're going to pick the cows, what are yeah. some of the things on cows? And, and again, um, I, I've worked with ranches that have just a few cows up to a lot of cows, and, it, and it's really all about uh, how to make that work in their system. So, and that, that comes to when you design the synchronization protocol and exactly how you right. do this. But basically, to make this work, you do have to have some facilities. If, um, because for any of the synchronization protocols that we're going to use, the cows are gonna be run through the squeeze chute, you know, at least a couple of times. And that has to, you have to be able to do that smoothly and efficiently. Um, you, you need to be able to sort off the calves. And, and so, a lot of it look, is, is really facilities. So before we talk about, um, or when I, when I work with a herd and they want to implement AI in their cows, it's really looking at their, their pasture situation, their facilities, are they set up close, you know, are the handling facilities close to where we can do this and actually make it happen. Cool. So start with the heifers, look at your facilities if you're going to work with cows, more with Bob Larson on how to AI and synchronize cows when we return from the break. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot, with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. 
Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Bob Larson from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Larson is the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine and part of the Department of Clinical Sciences here at the Veterinary College. And, and Bob, we're, we're talking about AI and synchronization. We've been leading up to, you know, why we do it, who the candidates are, make sure you have your facilities. We've decided it's what we're going to do. Right. So now we've got to synchronize those exactly. cows. So who's going to be involved? You know, exactly. what do I need to think about? The good thing is really in, in almost any community in, in the United States, there's going to be some real good resources. Uh, one of the first people to go talk to is your veterinarian. Sure. They're familiar with the, with the synchronization protocols and how we get that done. Uh, also, most communities have a, a semen supplier or two in the area, and these guys are very knowledgeable as well. Uh, they provide information about synchronization protocols. They can provide you some real good guidance on which bulls to select. And, and I have found you know, that the resources to actually accomplish synchronization in AI are, are high quality and readily available. You bet. So, so when we start thinking about you know, synchronizing these, these animals, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a lot of different programs out there. There, there are, and, and there's been a lot of work done by reproductive physiologists and veterinarians, and, and I'm really pretty happy with quite a few different synchronization protocols. Some of them are, are relatively short. You can accomplish the synchronization in seven days, and some of them are longer, more like a month, and each have their advantages and disadvantages, and that's why working with your local veterinarian and the semen supplier is a great way. When you talk about you know what you have for facilities and how you want this to accomplish, they can find a synchronization protocol that will work, work pretty well for you. And it'll probably have to do with your facilities, how you're set up, um, you know, the expertise that you have on the, the facility. Yes. You know, who's going to be doing the AI? For the most part, um, again, in my experience, the, the semen suppliers oftentimes have technicians that can do the AI, or veterinary clinics a lot of times have a technician that can do the, the AI. And so that is something that you can relatively easily outsource to, again, people that are in the community and in most parts of the country, you're going to be able to find someone that has those skills. And, and I, I highly recommend that versus trying to learn to AI yourself. If you're going to AI a lot of cows, I think it's great to learn yourself. But in general, I like to outsource that to the guys that do it every day. Yep. And, and if you were going to want to learn, there, there are AI courses across the United States there are. And, and some here at K-State even. You betcha. And so, you know, for some people, that's, that's the best option is to learn to do AI themselves. Uh, and there are a lot of courses that they can learn to do that. Sure. Uh, anything else on syncing up the well, herd? Or? One of the things that we often, is, is not every cow maybe should be synchronized in AI. So when I look at mature cows, one of the things I think about is, do you want to try to synchronize the entire cow herd or maybe just the ones that calve early? In, in my experience, those cows that calve in the first 30 to 40 days are going to be the best candidates. And in a, lot, in a lot of herds, that's kind of a subgroup, and, and usually that's a majority of the herd. Um, but they will, they will identify that group of cows that they want to synchronize in AI. Sometimes that's when they calved. Sometimes that's geographic location. We, we can do it in this pasture, but not in this pasture. Right. So we're going to utilize synchronization and AI in part of the cows and not the others. And those are all good reasons, and, but a thought process that you need to think about. And so, so with those cows, I like the early calving cows are my favorite cows to, to synchronize. Awesome. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Larson on synchronizing and AI and cows and heifers in your herd. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. Hello folks, this is Dr. Nels Lindberg with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation out of Great Bend, Kansas. Today's BQA tip of the day, we're going to visit about grass tetany in these rye cattle or, or wheat cattle. We're in the springtime, we've got good, nice, fresh growth on this rye and magnesium levels are deficient and these cattle need to be supplemented with mineral to offset the magnesium deficiency so that they don't get what we call the grass tetany in these cattle. It's a very common problem this time of year. We often like to see producers preload their cattle uh, prior to turning them out on rye or wheat uh, with that high mag mineral. That will help them adjust to this rye when they get turned back out so that we don't see that grass tetany. If you do see a calf acting weak or trying to go down 
It's uh, probably your number one rule out for these sort of cattle while they're turned out on rye or wheat this time of year. But again, don't, don't hesitate to contact your local veterinarian to get some help. Thank you. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living obviously, but it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine, Dr. Bob Larson at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And we're talking about AI and synchronization, something that is a foundation of a lot of people's herds. Yeah. And, and so let's, you know, we talked about selecting the cows and the early calvers, but there's, you know, you, maybe some repro track scoring and things we need to do on these heifers too. There's some really neat things we can do with heifers. Again, a lot of times the question that I'm asked is to, to answer is, is this group of heifers ready to be synchronized? Are they, have they reached puberty? Are they, are they fertile? Are they ready to be uh, bred? And I am going to invest some money in this synchronization protocol and this, high, this semen that's from proven sires. So I want to make sure that I've got a pretty good chance of, of being successful with the pregnancies. So. Over, over the last couple of decades, there's been some really nice work about how we can evaluate heifers to make sure that they're ready for the breeding season. Uh, there's some things that, that we, we know that body weight and size impacts a lot um, of the information as far as have they reached puberty or not. So even just a body weight is a good place to start. The other thing we know is that if we uh, put a sleeve on and go in there and palpate the reproductive tract, we can tell if, if the heifers mature and, and, and cycling already yeah. or nearly cycling. And, and I really recommend that, particularly um, with, with these heifers that, that uh, we haven't had a lot of experience with or a group of heifers, I really like to find out where they are. Um, now, the timing of that examination can, can vary. For some producers, we like to do it about six weeks before they want to breed. That way, if those heifers are, are really not quite where we want them to be, uh, not a high enough percentage of them have already started cycling, we can uh, increase their nutrition because uh, a little bit of nutritional flush will put some weight on them and, and get some more of them to cycle. Um, so for some groups, I like to, to do my evaluation about six weeks out. Uh, there's other times though that um, for some herds, they know they're not gonna synchronize all the heifers. And so right. we'll do the evaluation right before we start the synchronization program. So seven to 10 days before they want to AI we'll do a, an evaluation and then we really only synchronize those that are already cycling or really close to cycling. Um, and so it allows you to kind of optimize uh, those expenses of the synchronization and AI 
so that you pick those heifers that are most likely to, to really be successful? Well, it's, 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 you know, the, the size and the body weight and the nutrition during the winter and, and getting those heifers in condition. All of that's important to make sure they're going to be where we want them to be uh, maturity-wise. Yeah, water, nutrition, animal husbandry, all that, uh, you, you know, we always lean on, on we worry about breeding when it's that time of the year, and right. we really need to worry about it year-round. That, that's exactly right. The, you know, this uh, reproduction is, is complicated. Uh, we spend a lot of time teaching the students about it, and they, they know it's complicated. But uh, basically, good management from birth all the way through that first breeding season is really important. Well, thanks for being on the show today. You betcha. It's good to be here. It's always good to have Dr. Bob Larson. And, and Dr. Larson, I agree. Always work with your local practitioner. And if you want to know more about what Dr. Larson and I do here at K-State, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.